This episode of The Extra Dimension brought to you by Squarespace. Just kidding. Welcome to The Extra Dimension. This episode is on the topic of the complex world of ad blocking, featuring Ian Arbuck and Ryan Rampersad. Find the show notes for this episode of The Extra Dimension at thenexus.tv slash TED11. Ryan, I want to start this one off with a little story. Great. So when I was, uh, when I, was I think, in high school... I was talking to my mom about all of the some of the really cool like features that Google gives us in their products and specifically I think we we're talking about like Google Docs. And my mom was like, "Oh, it's free? Like you don't have to pay for it at all?" cuz she knew that you have to pay for like Microsoft Office. Mm-hmm. And and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, you don't have to pay anything." And she was like, "Well, how can they afford to do that?" And I was like, I thought about it for a moment, and at, even at, at that young age, I was able to go like, oh, well, they make most of their money off of ads, I think. And she was like, what ads? And I was like, you're welcome, Mom, because I had installed Adblock Plus on all of the computers in all of like, her entire life, mm-hmm. and she had forgotten about the fact that the internet is based on ads. Yep. So ads are, as we said, pretty much everywhere on every website that exists to make money, right? Um, for the for the most part, the vast majority of the web is is supported by ads. Um, now, why why is that? Why do ads exist? Um, so obviously, we want to keep the content free, right? That's that's the basic reason that ads exist is to to reduce the price of the content for the consumer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and ads have existed for a lot longer than the internet has, right? I hope so. So I, yeah, I think. Uh, the earliest example that I can think of is the newspaper industry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I could see that. Um, and they and they usually would combine advertising with a small fee to get the issue mm-hmm. uh, to, you know, cover the costs of printing and distributing and the writers and everybody. Right. Um, but so on the on the internet, uh, for the most part, they get rid of the paywall entirely. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a very, very important thing in on the web because the only way that you're going to be able to spread your content effectively is if people can share it freely with all everybody that they know, just send them a link and then everybody can visit it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how you get the viewership numbers. So it's, it's advantageous to have it completely free and then completely like ad supported. Right. right? Um, there are a few exceptions. Like, you know, I think, uh, the New York times still has like a subscription. Yeah. Um, the big ones that have the name that existed before the internet that, you know, have the audience that is going to want that content from them specifically and aren't going to go to any other alternative source. Yeah. There's a, uh, a, a recent large paper in somewhere in Europe recently shifted away from having an ad based website model mm. to a, we're no longer going to report on everything. We're only going to report on good things, and you have to pay for it. Right, and they were the ones who did more long-form stuff. Yeah, they switched than, to a long format. Yeah, than breaking news. Mm-hmm. Um, and they... they and it, who were they? I forget, but I they, they had a particular niche that mm-hmm. they served. Right. Um, so they were able to get rid, get away with that kind of thing because they have kind of a lockdown on that specific mm-hmm. area. Um, and they're very good at what they so, do. So, in other words, so for general content, ads are really useful because... You need to get that general content to people who aren't necessarily willing to pay for it directly mm-hmm. to as many people as possible in order to get money for it. Yeah. Do you think that YouTube could have been such a big phenomenon if they weren't a if there was a paywall? No. Absolutely not. No. You know, too many people wouldn't pay for it. Right. Um, as we are seeing these days mm-hmm. with YouTube Red's existence, and you know, it's right. a, a fraction of a percent of people. Yeah, and it makes a, about, about ten dollars for them. Yep. Every month. Um, so, all right. So, obviously, that's, you know, kind of the, the positive aspects of ads, right? Uh, let's talk a little bit about the negative aspects of advertisements. Um, some of these go back, you know, no matter what medium the advertisements mm-hmm. are on, um, there are going to be problems with them. But uh, some of these problems are specific to the Internet, to the, the digital uh, distribution of ads. Um, so, first up... I love this phrasing that you used one uh, time. One time, yeah. Back when we were talking about how content creators can can make money and support themselves, um, you said that ads invert the customer. Yep. Which means that the consumer, the person who's reading the article or watching the video or whatever, is no longer the customer for the site. Um, 
and and the content, the stuff that they are reading or watching, is no longer the product. The pro- which is just that whole concept right there. That takes so long for you to absorb. Yeah. And once you absorb it, you understand how the model could be. This model could be containing so many negatives. Mm-hmm. You were no. It's no longer just you know producer consumer. There's this whole other level to it now. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, that now the product is the consumer's attention, mm-hmm. and the advertisers are the customers. And the content is the bait. Yep. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and and it also, in addition to kind of being kind of icky just on that level, it also creates kind of this problem where there's a possibility of, the, of like, a conflict of interest mm-hmm. for the content creator especially if they're like a news corporation right Right. because if they have somebody who's advertising on their site it it might it would be possible for them to try to twist stories a little bit to be more positive in that company's favor in that right because because they want to stay on that company's good side Mm -hmm. right um most news corporations make it clear that they you know, they do everything that they can to avoid that kind of situation Most, by, by uh, keeping sure. like the editorial team and the advertising team separate and yada, yada, yada. Sure they do. But it, it's also um, interesting because even like certain subjects are going to be less represented, mm-hmm. such as ad blockers, right? right? How often do you see articles on The Verge talking about ad blockers? Somewhat frequently. Really? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I've seen quite a few. Um yeah, I think the only I only really started seeing them once iOS started releasing con, or content blockers in iOS nine, and that was kind of a such a big right explosion. Because usually, that, there's not a lot of news about these content blocking tools. Right. Yeah. Well, is there? No. There I mean, there, there there might be. We just don't know no, because the news. I follow the don't. guy who makes that block plus. He's just developing away. He's not okay. doing anything. Okay. Very nice guy. Somewhat um, German. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's where that's based. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, conflict of interest is a is an increased possibility when advertising is the main, f- you know, right. revenue stream. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's and and those are things that apply to all any medium. Right. Um, now that there are, I mean, we a know few... it's, we know it's been a big thing in the newspaper industry. We mm-hmm. we've known for years that corporate interests have controlled, you know, s- you know, s- hit its way at various large newspapers. So. They've, the industry as a whole has gone to great lengths to try to get rid of that issue. Mm-hmm. Online, though, it's much harder. Right. Um, now, there are a few specific issues dealing with uh, online ads um, because, in particular, the the better the better ads are going to be the ones that can figure out who it is who is visiting the page and can give them a targeted ad that they're going to be more likely to be interested in Mm -hmm. right so if uh if the ad agencies know that i am interested in technology they'll be able to show me advertisements for in particular uh, that i am a google fan you know they might be able to show me like nexus phone advertisements i see those all the time me too yeah actually i wonder why (laughs) i don't know um so so in order to do that in order to target those ads they have to track you right they have to know some stuff about you and store information about you and that is does not sit well with a lot of people. There's a lot of customers. But not only that, it also doesn't even register for a lot of users. Mm, mm-hmm. There are well, so many people who just, eh, I don't care. I mean, you hear a lot of jokes from people about like, yeah, I searched for this one thing one time, and now a- Amazon is just showing me all of these suggestions for something that's related to it. I think uh, I think the one I remember is Marco Armand. He searched for a lamp one time. <laughs> <laughs> and for days he was be just barraged with lamps. Yep. Yep. Um now it's also uh an issue that digital ads can be a lot more obtrusive than uh traditional ads can be. Um you know cuz the the worst that you can get in a newspaper is a full page spread ad. And you just right? turn the page. Yep, exactly. Um now on on web browsers, there are a lot more options. You know, you, you have your traditional banner ads that sit alongside the content. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of video, you would have, uh, you know, pre-roll. Ad, pre-roll, yep. Or, um, or uh, what else do they call it? Interstitial. You could have um, mid-segment. 
Mm -hmm. um, you have the the text ones that show up yep. along the bottom I don't of know the what video. Those are called. I'm, yeah, I don't remember. Insert maybe. Um, you can and, make up a term. And then you have traditional banner ads on there as well. Right. Um, Do it, you remember when YouTube had the video and then an ad right next to it? I remember. Doesn't it still? I don't know. I have Adblock now. Oh, okay. Um, Weren't you just talking about a 10-minute pre-roll ad on YouTube earlier? Yes, that happened. And that, that was, wasn't... That was oh, was Chromecast. that Chromecast? That was on okay. Chromecast. Gotcha. How do you skip an... It, does it have a skip ad That, that did have a skip. In, However, we were testing the TV, and it was a great opportunity to do so. Okay, cool. Did you watch the whole thing? No. Good. Um, we turned the TV off. Now, they can get a little bit more annoying uh, when they do things like you open up the page and boom, before before you can even see the content of the article, there's an ad that's, you know, there. on top of it and you have to click a little X up the, in the corner to make it go away. And it's not away. just a little X. It's the most microscopic X right. in the world. They want you to accidentally click on the ad so now, badly. So I can tell you a story about that one then. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's this nice guy called Paul Therott. He's kind of like the John Gruber, but for Microsoft. Microsoft covers Windows okay, and okay. Microsoft Tech News. And so on his website, which I enjoy reading occasionally, he had one of these pop-up ads. It wasn't a separate mm -hmm. window, but it was a model box pop-up. Mm -hmm. And it showed an ad. And the little microscopic X could not be clicked on mobile. Oh. And so I told him on Twitter, like, hey, your pop-up ads on your website don't get closed on mobile because it just doesn't work. And he's like, well, I don't have any control over the ad. Sorry. Goodbye. Psh. And I'm like, well, maybe you shouldn't have them then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of pop-ups, there are actual proper pop-ups that uh, open up in new windows. When was the last time you saw that, though? Actually, the other day. Wow, really? uh, I don't remember how I ended up getting one, but it was actually a pop-under instead of a pop-up. Mm. So I actually don't know which website it was that opened it up. I feel like that's gone out of favor these days. Yeah. Most browsers have some intelligence to limit the pop-ups that can be spanned. And by some intelligence, you mean they just, in general, stop... Yeah, uh, stop them. Stop, yeah, stop any web pages from opening up new windows. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there are, like, uh, huge banners that take up almost the entire screen until you scroll down. I love those. Yeah. Have you seen the new ones they've started doing where you're on mobile? When you're scrolling down a page, the ad is full width. And mm -hmm. you have to scroll the ad up, like, but you're scrolling down the page. The ad moves up. Oh, it's the most oh, it's the most weird. bizarre thing, and it's so unusual. Mm -hmm. I, as an experienced user, don't even know how to do it most <laughs> of the time. Like, why won't it go away? Uh, that's yeah, that's really strange. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, those things, those are going to be problems uh, that are specific to digital stuff. Um, now, they also sometimes resort to deceitful methods to get clicks. Um, so a lot of times you'll see... Uh, you are the winner. Yeah, yeah, you're the winner. Um, or like a little mini game yeah. um, where, you, you know... Click it, the Zubat. It, yeah, or, or like if, if you've got like a, I don't know, a frog that's trying to like eat some, some yeah. flies or whatever and you the cursor follows. It's the Zubat. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, ads that are meant to look like the rest of the page... The worst. Um, so, like, it, when uh, you know you're going to the Source download Forge. download page for yeah, exactly for some uh, utility that you need, C cleaner. Then it's that you're going to have to cert like take a look, a very careful look at the page to figure out which one of these download links is the actual link and which the one, one that's these... not blinking. <laughs> They've gotten more clever though. Oh. They they have kind of like uh, toned down down like download <laughs> link yeah. ads that yeah they're oh man they they're getting pretty good at this. Um, so anyway, so because of all these problems, a lot of users don't want to have to deal with ads at all, right? What's the solution, Ian? Uh, well, ad blocking is one <gasps> of the solutions. There's actually several solutions and we're going to talk about them, which is why this is the complex world of ad blocking. Well, this is great. But yeah. Um, okay. So traditional ad blocking, um, most of those are extensions or add-ons or whatever you want to call them for, uh, browsers, right? Um, so you install that on your browser and it will take a look at all of the content that the page is trying to load and stop it from loading any of the ads. Um, most of the time that's done by uh, figuring out what server the content is being loaded from. Mm -hmm. And if it's being loaded from a known uh, ad server, then it just will refuse the connection. Right. Um, and so that, that leaves most of the page looking exactly the way that it would, but the, ads, the ads, yeah, the ads are gone. Um, and this is like, 
I mean, this this is what I did for most of high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was you know having Adblock Plus on my on my browser. Yep. Um, and I think I think that that for a very long time at least was like the most popular extension for Chrome. Um, probably for Firefox as well. I would hope so. Yeah. Um, and sometimes. And then there there are other categories of ad blockers that we can get into a little bit later. Um, that I I'd call those like sort of close alternatives to sure. a traditional ad blocker. Um, but first let's let's talk about some of the problems with ad blocking. Um, let's let's start out with the pro of ad blocking. Okay, you don't see any ads. Right there, well, that's it. I feel like that was implied. Well, we yeah. got to make sure. Well, also, yeah, in addition to not seeing ads, um, you're not downloading as much content onto the page. That's a good, which good, is good pro. Yep. Um, which means you know you'll download your page faster potentially, mm-hmm. and if you're on mobile, you'll save data because you didn't have to download extra yeah. stuff. On mobile, that's an especially big point. So that seems reasonable. Mm-hmm. Okay, now let's talk about those cons. Okay, cons. Um, it's going to contribute to a cycle of advertisers versus ad blockers where they're, you know, it's kind of an arms race, right? Um, so we have like both technological solutions. Um, so I, I remember a period of time where I, I think YouTube's engineers were constantly trying to find ways to serve ads that ad blocker wouldn't uh, catch. And then, you know, who the developer of Adblock Plus would, would catch that. And, mm-hmm. then, and of you know, course, you have it. websites like Hulu that if you have a blo- ad blocker enabled and it blocks one ad, then you just have to sit there for another two minutes of just silence right. to punish you. Those are really funny. Those are the best. Um, and then it, it's also kind of leading to uh, an increase of what we would call native advertising, mm-hmm. which is things like... Um, the advertisements are part of the content in some way. So you see this a lot in podcasts mm-hmm. uh, where the the hosts themselves read and uh, do an ad read. Um, and I suppose, like, when you think about podcasting, that's really the only way to that's do it. That's the only is, way. Is for it to be part of the audio so stream. So that, that, that's an example of a non-scummy way of advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Although, I mean, it does kind of uh, guilt the user into it a little bit more than, like, uh, advertising that's clearly not from... The publisher themselves. So for me, because it's it's like a personal plea. Depends. So for me, on Twit, the promise was we'll only tell you about ads of products that we use ourselves. Okay. And so that always implied to me is that we like these things enough to tell you about them, and we just happen to get money from it. Mm-hmm. And that's fine to me. Now, when I see the lamp ad on The Verge, because I looked up lamps two weeks ago, I know The Verge did not review that lamp, right? And I don't care. That ad, I don't like. Mm-hmm. But the ads on podcasts for gen- for general purpose podcasts that we listen to here, that's fine. Now, if it's an ad for GoDaddy, and I know for certain <laughs> that they do not use GoDaddy, because who would? Then I don't like it. Right. Yeah. Because um, then, yeah, it's completely impersonal. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and native advertising can take uh, kind of some more nefarious forms as well, such as um, you hear you hear about like BuzzFeed articles that are just uh, an elaborate advertisement for mm-hmm. Burger King or something. Like yeah. the entire advertisement is just leading up to or or mentioning Whoppers as much as possible or something like that. Um, and it's like you know it's it's not communicated to the user to the reader that this is paid content that you know like that that we're trying to sell you something. I got a pro tip. Yeah. Don't use Buzz, BuzzFeed. Well, well, yeah. I mean, they're one example, but a lot of places end up doing it. Don't use any of those places. <laughs> well, you got to figure out which ones they are. All of them. Um, another problem. Can you, can you think of any other way that uh, that, that arms race would uh, um, manifest so itself? So one of the things I would say, one of the negatives of ad blocking in general for me is that there's this um, modern tendency to say, well... We're going to allow some ads in if they're polite, but we're not going to allow others in if they're not polite. Right. So there's the the original Adblock Plus, they had this thing where you could have whitelisted ads mm-hmm. and your ad advertising agency or provider or whatever server could apply for whitelisting. And that's weird to me. Yeah. And so that, that, that they're actually getting, they're getting money and you're not that, weird yeah that that's actually one of the bullet points not next for morally ambiguous oh great um, is it's almost like i didn't read these notes yeah. at all well uh, yeah um so uh 
so ad blocking itself from the user's perspective is is a little bit morally ambiguous because well think not for me well, at all. okay so think i i'm thinking about it not just as an avid reader on the on the internet I don't but think about it also like that. as somebody who is making stuff right i don't think about it i make stuff all the time don't care at all block my ads but are, do it are you you don't even have ads exactly <laughs> problem solved <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a good SNBC theater sketch. I watch um, TV. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, like, think about... Uh, well, I, okay, yeah, I, I think about it from the perspective of I'm trying to make stuff and trying to make some money off of it so that I can justify spending right, a course. little bit more time doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, yeah, be, being being such a small-time creator that I don't have time to look for deals and think right. you know the other ways to make money like advertising is really the only option right mm-hmm. and and so from from that perspective i have stopped using ad blocking because i want to support the people who i read all the time now, right and i'm the exact opposite i do not stop using ad blocking i block all the ads but on the other hand i will never have ads on my websites ever right probably okay <laughs> And even if I did, I still would block them. I'd block my own ads. I don't care. <laughs> ads mean nothing to me. Mm-hmm. When it touches my browser, it's mine. I deal with it. It's, it's I can do whatever I want to them. That, yeah. And that goes back to the uh, so-called implied contract, right? Mm-hmm. Is that um, when the user is... is there, There's a school of thought that says that when the user visits a website, they are saying like, okay, I am going to take this thing that they are giving me and experience it exactly the way that they intended me to experience it, right? Yeah, they don't get that. Um, and, yeah, it, it, it's, yeah. I'm, I, I, it's kind I, of a flawed argument. For me, because I'm so technical, because I do this stuff. I, mm-hmm. I write websites. I make servers work. I, I probably will write eventually for my own job something that serves something similar to an ad. Okay. Wouldn't be surprised if I do it. Mm-hmm. I don't care what happens after it leaves my control. It doesn't matter to me anymore. Right. And yeah, part of, part of the problem with the implied contract argument is that like different web browsers display things differently inherently. Right. Right. Um, even like different operating systems. So if, if, if I visit your website and I'm on Windows XP, I'm not mm. going to see it the way that you intended it. No. Quote unquote. In fact, right? I don't think you'll even see it. It won't even load. <laughs> it, well, the fonts look a little weird. But I'm going to go I'll change th- my website so it will not load on XP. <laughs> that, Just for you. Can you do that? I, I guess I you, can. Can, you can ask the, uh, yeah. You should, oh man, <laughs> this is great. You should totally do this. I might have to. <laughs> uh, this is, this reminds me of the print page for the Nexus yes, website. Yes, it's yeah. a good Easter egg. Everybody go to the Nexus.tv. On this episode. Uh, slash TED11 and, and try to print D. it. Yep. Yep. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, okay, implied contract, not really a good argument, right? Um, so what if they put some kind of wording in their terms of service? Like, you register to Facebook.com and it says, you must agree to not block any ads oh, to use facebook.com that's a good one what if they did that but hmm. you you so you're using facebook.com and you agreed but your employer strips all the ads out mm. mm-hmm. yeah because you don't have uh complete control over what goes on at your work network right hmm well i can't access facebook at work anyway no i, I mean <laughs> just, just hypothetical but yeah 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 yeah. I, yeah that's a good one um and of course i i think most uh, services aren't going to have that kind of thing in their terms of use because they know that if people took that seriously, if they enforced it, they would be losing um, a good portion of their user base and probably the portion of their user base that's going to be the most vocal about that issue. They'd also be losing a boatload in legal fees. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now... Back to what you were talking about with uh, the whitelist. Yes, yeah, whitelisting. So, um, I'm pretty sure that that actually not not only... So the phrasing that they used when they were announcing this feature was like, okay, so some advertisements aren't as bad as others, right? right like re- text ads. Yeah, text ads aren't so bad. Um, and, you know, like specifically the ones that we really don't like are the ones that just Flash f- come up, up on top of yeah. the content and everything, right? So intrusive versus obtrusive. Yeah. Or... Non-intrusive. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, um, so so it it the the implication in that in that 
announcement was like, okay, we're going to make all of those decisions, but just simply based on which ads are okay, seen like from our point of view. Mm-hmm. But what the reality was is that uh, a lot of ad blockers, like this was a list that you could get on if you if you were an advertisement agency, you could get on this list, this white list, by paying AdBlock Plus. Right. Which is really stinky. It's fishy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not saying that model can't work. It totally can. It's just, it, it seems to centralize the power in the place that it shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, I, I, w- I wouldn't, I would say like, okay, well, so maybe you can submit your service to the, to, to AdBlock Plus, but then the users can vote. Well, is this ad mm-hmm. agency bad or good? And then the users have the power. So there's kind of an entry fee and then the users get to pick. Yeah. Is this good or bad? Okay. I think my ideal uh, for an ad blocker is one that just doesn't block any ads until I specifically tell it, this one is bad, do it here. Yeah. Um, so, like, for the most part, I would be seeing ads on on the reasonable websites that I visit 95% of the time. And then in the rare occasions mm-hmm. where my sister's like, help me install a Minecraft mod. And then and you're trying to go to downloads.com slash yeah. Minecraft field. Mm-hmm. And then there's eight download buttons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, in those cases, I definitely want an ad block. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, the decision of whether or not to use ad blockers is a pretty complex one when you start considering not only your needs, but also the needs of everybody. Don't consider anybody else but you. That's not a very caring attitude, Ryan. It's not. I don't care at all, even a little bit. Uh, so let's talk about some kind of close alternatives to ad blocking. Um, so we've, we've got a few services that kind of portray themselves as like uh, reader apps. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I, I would say that readability and pocket would fall under this yeah, category. Yeah, Instapaper, you know, all those people. Mm-hmm. Um, so what those ones do is you you find an article that you like and you basically share it with the the reader app. Yeah. So pocket. Or and then what it does. Yep. It strips away everything that isn't the article itself. Right. That isn't the content that you're there to see. Mm-hmm. And, and usually they'll also strip away not only like the stuff on the page that isn't the content, but it will also strip away like the um, formatting of right. the content itself. Makes it look nice and uniform. Yep. So that everything that you're reading, no matter where it came from, uh, is wonderful. All going to be the same. Yep. Um, and and that's that's, you know pretty good option especially from the user's point of view um though i i mean a lot of the websites that i that i read avidly i do so because i appreciate the time and effort that they put into their website design what websites are you reading we're gonna get into this later polygon i'm thinking mostly i love them okay i stole my design from them too yeah exactly (laughs) um but yeah so um Readability, I think, takes this to kind of the ultimate level, mm-hmm. uh, where they had a, a model where users would pay a subscription to use readability, right? And then the, and then readability would turn around and they, they would take a cut of that money, mm-hmm. uh, and they would pass it on to the publishers of the things that their readers are reading. If they signed up for it. Right. Yes. Which is the problem. So like, it, it's kind of similar to, a subscription music streaming service, for example, except that in the case of the music, every every song that's available there is available because the publishers put it there. Right, right? exactly. With readability, they just go and take content uh, from you know other people's servers, modify it, and serve it to the user. Right. So it's sort of like a you know it's like a, a canyon with a big bridge. So the users are on one side, the publishers are on the other side. Okay. Right. And and then readability is the bridge. Sort of. That or the carrier that walks across the bridge. Right. And yeah, while they're walking takes some scissors and cuts out everything that isn't the content. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Um and so yeah, so that uh that model has kind of a lot of appeal, a lot of promise. Um but like you said, the publishers have to be aware of it and they have to go and sign up for it in order to get the money out of it. And and so that that sounds good. So you can you can n- name a uh, news publishing organization that posts content on it. Go. Uh, uh the Verge. Very good. <laughs> <Crap>. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they rule my life a little bit too much, I think. Turns out the Nexus.tv. <laughs> okay, so The Verge. 
they can certainly sign up for readability. I'm sure they did. Mm-hmm. Easy to do. Now, what about uh, little little time blog? Like you know, like my blog, for example. Sure. If I had yeah. ads. Would I remember in my daily life to sign up for readability? Would I even hear about it? If I, I did, would I remember to go collect it every month? Yeah. And if there are too many of these kinds of products, you know, if there's right. a readability and Insta paper and pocket. Yeah, okay, exactly. So now I've got to do it at three places, mm-hmm. and that is, it, there's too much overhead. Yeah. Like the ideal of the internet of of this technological revolution that that happened ten, fifteen years ago, whatever. Sure. Um, it, the promise is that like content creators, you just have to worry about making content. You don't have to worry about the business side of things. You can just make money. Woo! It's magic. I don't know about that, but okay. But like that's that's the ideal, right? Is you can worry about the stuff that you are specialized in, and you don't have to be a part of a big corporation to take advantage of. I, this. you know, what I was actually going to say just in a few seconds was you could get all that if you just got a job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Turns out it's yeah, it's it's still a little difficult to get into these fields without going in the traditional routes. Yeah, yeah. like the routes that work and make money. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, so I like readability yeah. model. I like it. it. It's good. It's just it 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 doesn't connect those publishers to the stream of money. Mm-hmm. So if you take yeah. out the stream of money and you just block the ads, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so use Pocket then mm-hmm. instead. Well, uh, I think Pocket has a subscription too. Mm-mm. But oh they, wait, well they have to a themselves pre- right, but they don't give any money away. Yeah, because that's just a premium thing for yeah. some sp- premium some specific feature. uh, features. You yeah. can search or something. Yeah, yeah something. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, Brave. Ooh, Brave is an interesting example, and this is actually fairly new. Yes. Um, they, I think they announced it uh, towards the end of January of this yeah. year. Hello, Link Bubble. How you doing? And yeah, so so Brave is a browser. Um, the the head of this this project is um, Brandon uh, uh, Brendan Ike, Brent- the ex CEO of Mozilla, but mm-hmm. also the creator of JavaScript, the one true language. Yep. And. Uh, yeah, so kind of big names are behind this. Um, and what it does is it removes all ads and trackers uh, that, well, okay, I think the only ads that it removes are the ones that have trackers associated with them. But it Let's al- just go with that. Yeah, but it also uh, removes any trackers that are supposed to be invisible on the page that aren't associated with an ad, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, it's, yeah, it, the, the point of it is not necessarily to be uh, an ad blocker for for the purposes of like your attention, but to protect privacy. Um, and to that end, their ultimate goal is when we take away those ads that had trackers on them, we will replace the ads with stuff that doesn't track you. Allegedly stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to have to trust them. Right. Um, and the revenue from those ads that were put there by the brave browser are going to be shared Amongst several parties. So Brave itself obviously gets a cut. Um, they forward a little bit of it on to the publisher of the of the website. Um, and then also, unusually, the user gets a little bit of it. Yes. And it's not like the user doesn't have this money in a pot that they can cash out in actual money money. They kind of can. Can they? Because it's Bitcoin. You can do whatever you want to it. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, because I, I as far I, as I know, you can add your own money to it if you want to. Also, oh, oh, okay. Because I was under the impression that the 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 purpose of uh the 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 pot of money that the user gets is you get to choose like you do that if you want to not see ads at all on a particular website, then you just put it's the money more, into it's that. It's more of a tipping thing. Like you can mm-hmm. tip the websites you like, or you can just auto tip the twenty most you use. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. That's what they say. I don't know if it's been implemented as such. Yet. Right. I don't think so. That's that's their promise, their goal. Um, so I like this model because it empowers both you as the consumer. You get a little bit of money, and then you get to choose with your money who you want to support more. Mm-hmm. And so if you like the content of The Verge a lot, you can give it to The Verge. If you like some comic book place, you can give it to the comic book place. There we go. Everybody wins. I also like that the content creator gets the money. But on the other hand, we have the readability problem again. Now mm-hmm. we have to go and sign up for brave.com slash revenue. And um, hmm, what if I didn't hear about Brave yet? Because I'm a little website called thenexus.tv. Yeah, who, who doesn't cover tech news? I don't. I don't I cover don't. tech news. We're yeah. the cooking channel now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, and, so it, and also it's using Bitcoin. 
Right. And so it uses Bitcoin, which is a problem because Bitcoin is an extremely volatile currency. It may it may contain value. It might not contain value. Yeah. Who knows? Depends on the season. <sighs> so, yeah, um, they're both really fascinating solutions, but obviously they have problems. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and Brave has one other thing going for it. It, it claims to value the privacy of the user, which means, unlike most ads, the ads they inject won't track you everywhere. Mm -hmm. So when you search for a lamp, the lamps won't follow you. Right. That's a great and cool thing. I like that. However, that's what they say, but it yet remains to be seen if they can actually make something that doesn't track you. Because when they call the ads from the service, you know, the browser, you know, figures it out locally mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. ads it should show you. But when they call the ads, the servers are going to know what ads they called. They could just remember. Oh, that's true. That's it, true. You have to trust them and their stack. And if it's not open, then I can't trust them. But I don't care either way, so it doesn't matter in my case. But in theory, it's a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the final alternative to ad blockers is, that I would classify is RSS feeds. Mm -hmm. um, because most RSS feeds don't have ads in them. Um and if if you are reading an RSS feed that has the full content of the article in there, then you're getting all of the content without any of the fancy formatting of the website and without any of the ads. So you've never seen an ad in an RSS feed? I I have, but they're very, very uncommon. That's because nobody reads RSS feeds. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Um and I, I would I don't think that RSS feeds are much of a like they, they don't have a whole lot of moral issues going on with them because the the content creator is in complete control of what goes into the RSS feed. So if I wanted people to have to visit my the website of the blog, I could just have the RSS feed have the title and have a link to it. Yeah. Boom. Exactly. Yeah. Um and that's you you see that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um other times they just don't mind. Yeah, they have the full text. Yep. Yep. Um yeah, I, I think I think that's pretty much it for ad blockers. Um, someday, someday we might uh, run into the technology that can like automatically block uh, native advertising. That'll be an interesting day. Mm -hmm. uh, so podcast uh, managers that can automatically or or just skip over it if you you know. You know, I don't know if we're gonna get to that anytime soon, but it would be interesting. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a fascinating topic. You know, one of the things I like about ad blocking is that. It makes my life way better, and it doesn't seem to really matter if I do it. Right. Yeah. Well, it is seeming to matter a bit more because the the percentage of people who are on the internet who are ad blocking is increasing. It is. It's, but it's we're almost at a third of people in the U.S. I think. Yeah. Sure, they are. I don't remember which survey I read that said a third, but I'd be surprised. That's what if I had a third written down. Even know how to check their bloody email. <laughs> Okay, maybe it was a third of the traffic. I don't mind Good. doing it. I don't mind if you do it to me because I don't have any ads. Problem solved. So, I, don't I, I think that it, I think you are excused from making that argument since you don't have ads on any of your stuff. I think it's a you know conscious decision to not have this issue. That's true. That's true. And if I, I, I just I won't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I it's something that I've grappled with. I don't need uh, to grapple with it. I grappled it with when I was younger. I made my choice. I stand by it. <laughs> oh man, maybe I think too much. You might. It's, I might. Mm -hmm. Um, if you like to think and you want to read any of the many long articles that I linked to in our show notes, reminder that is at thenexus.tv slash ted eleven. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar. And of course, that's pretty much it. You don't have a website? Do I? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Ryan, <laughs> RyanRiverside dot com, which soon will not be available on Windows XP. <laughs> oh, turns out. <laughs> Uh, I am Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck, uh, on Patreon on, as Ian R. Buck, on YouTube as Ian Buck. You know, I'm all so over the place. So when are you registering IanRBuck.com? Soon? Okay. I okay. When I have time. Hurry I, up. I needed to do that before I have to take care of my sisters for three weeks. Good. That's going to be a fun babysitting project. Do it, do it, do it. Um, it, and since this is the Extra Dimension, our kind of wild card show, if you, listener, have any topics that you would like us to tackle, uh, please hit that contact link on the page. Um, that should be under our beautiful faces. 
Um, or if you want to be a guest on the show or whatever, uh, yeah, use that. Or if content. you have a topic, yeah, you like topics, mm-hmm. go for it. Do it. We'd love click, to hear click from it you. Now. All right. Okay. See you later. Have a good one. See, all that Google crap is stored in the Google folder because I don't want to see it. Oh, my God. I hate all that crap. I, I use them all. It's in the way. It is the way. Good one. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I think that also I, might be a title. I can't believe I managed to come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put a marker there.